everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication known as trifluoperazine. Its brand name is Stelazine. Now, before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. Trifluoperazine is a phenothiazine that has effective activity against anxiety as well as schizophrenia. It exhibits anticholinergic activity as well as alpha-adrenergic inhibition. In terms of indications for use, this medication is indicated to be used in the treatment of anxiety and schizophrenia. Before somebody was to use trifluoperazine, there are some contraindications that they must clear, as well as some precautions and warnings that they should be made aware of. Patients who have blood dyscrasias or bone marrow depression cannot use this medication. This medication cannot be given to a patient in a comatose state, and it also cannot be used by patients who are in a depressed state due to CNS depressants. Patients with a hypersensitivity to phenothiazines cannot use this medication. And lastly, it cannot be used by patients who have liver damage. In terms of precautions, this medication is on the Beers criteria, which is a list of medication that the elderly population should either avoid or use cautiously. You would want to avoid prescribing this medication for things like delirium and dementia to the elderly population, as it may put them at an increased risk of experiencing a cerebrovascular accident, and it may induce or worsen delirium. Prolonged use at high doses may result in severe CNS symptoms. Some patients who have angina pectoris or chest pain may experience an increase in their pain levels after using this medication. Hypotension or low blood pressure has been reported, and if a patient did have issues with their blood pressure, they should avoid using high doses of this medication. Patients should be made aware that jaundice and liver damage have both been reported. Potentially fatal neuroleptic malignant syndrome has been reported with the use of trifluoperazine. And potentially irreversible tardive dyskinesias may occur. There would be an increased risk of this in the elderly population, especially elderly women. This medication has the ability to lower the seizure threshold, so if a patient is using anticonvulsive medications, they may have to dose adjust. And lastly, this medication should be used cautiously in patients who have glaucoma. Now, once somebody is cleared of the contraindications and made aware of the precautions and warnings, and they start to use trifluoperazine, they can expect to receive their dose orally or through an intramuscular injection. So if somebody is using this medication to treat anxiety and they're taking the oral tablets, they would typically start off with a dose of 1 to 2 milligrams taken twice daily. Doses should not exceed 6 milligrams per day, and they should only use the medication for about 12 weeks. In schizophrenia, a patient may use 2 to 5 milligrams taken twice daily. And the usual effective dose is somewhere between 15 and 20 milligrams per day, given in divided doses. The maximum dose in this setting would be 40 milligrams daily. So as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using trifluoperazine, so I'll go over some of those here now. Some patients may experience hypotension or low blood pressure, as well as orthostatic hypotension, which is a sudden drop in blood pressure when going from a seated to a standing position. Some patients may experience diminished sweating, as well as photosensitivity, and constipation and dry mouth may occur as well. Some patients may experience dizziness or somnolence, and others may experience tardive dyskinesias. Third vision, urinary retention, and nasal congestion have also been reported. Some more rare but serious side effects would be jaundice, or the development of a seizure, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, as well as priapism. That's all we're going to talk about today with trifluoperazine. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.